Air Force held live fire drills and sent more fighter jets to its base on disputed Woody Island in the South China Sea last week, as the U.S. Navy steps up drills and freedom of navigation operations in the region. The People's Liberation Army Southern Theater Command conducted the drills on Wednesday and Thursday last week, with more than 3,000 missiles fired at moving targets at sea, state-run China National Radio reported on Sunday. It did not say where in the South China Sea the exercises were held. Videos from the drills posted on state broadcaster CCTV's website showed they involved JH-7 bombers and J-11B fighter jets. It came after Washington last week formally rejected most of Beijing's expansive maritime claims in the strategic, resource-rich South China Sea, through which one-third of global shipping passes, and parts of which are also claimed by Vietnam, the Philippines, Malaysia, Brunei and Taiwan. The tougher U.S. line has worsened tensions between the two superpowers and Chinese military experts say it could push the PLA to conduct more frequent drills in the region. Hong Kong-based military commentator Song Jiangping said the exercises were aimed at sending a warning to the U.S. Navy over its recent patrols in the area, as the bombers were designed to attack warships at sea. China has also developed another bomber, the J-16, which is more powerful than the JH-7, Song said, adding that he expected the PLA to send more advanced fighter jets to the region for drills. Large-scale naval drills in the South China Sea will become a regular activity as tensions escalate between China and the U.S. Hong Kong-based military commentator Song Jiangping said the exercises were aimed at sending a warning to the U.S. Navy over its recent patrols in the area, as the bombers were designed to attack warships at sea. China has also developed another bomber, the J-16, which is more powerful than the JH-7, Song said, adding that he expected the PLA to send more advanced fighter jets to the region for drills. Large-scale naval drills in the South China Sea will become a regular activity as tensions escalate between China and the U.S. Meanwhile, recent satellite images show that the PLA has deployed at least four J-11Bs to Woody Island, in the Paracels chain, Forbes reported on Friday. The fighter jets can be seen on an airstrip on the island, which China calls Yangsheng. The J-11B is broadly equivalent to the F-15 Eagle used by the U.S. Air Force. China's Air Force conducted a similar live-fire drill involving its JH-7 bombers in the South China Sea in 2016, after the U.S. supported a ruling in favor of the Philippines by an international tribunal at The Hague. The ruling, which Beijing has refused to recognize, invalidated China's claims to the waters based on the so-called Nine Dash Line that appears on official Chinese maps and encircles much of the South China Sea. July 13. U.S. State Secretary Mike Pompeo issued a public press statement entitled U.S. Position on Maritime Claims in the South China Sea. Although there is nothing new in the content of this sort of message, the statement inevitably caused panic speculation, because it was issued by the U.S. Secretary of State at a time when the relations between Beijing and Washington plummeted. It calls into question the security and stability in the South China Sea region as well as the prospect for China-U.S. relations in the international order. Pompeo's statement is riddled with questionable strategic and tactical claims. At the tactical level, it continues the U.S. practice of leading international public opinion, setting up a universal value benchmark and smearing its rivals with various evidence, including false, deceptive, and distorted proofs. Generally, U.S. strategy against China won't allow Washington's absolute predominance in the current world order to be changed by China's rise. Therefore, the U.S. has been close to a strategic point of no return with a number of tactical pressures it has placed on China. Peo's statement is once again using salami tactics around the strategic line between China and the U.S. This is a new bet on the China-U.S. relations by U.S. political elites. They are confident enough that China will not overreact and dare not start a showdown. They believe that such tactics with limited pressure will make China angry, oppressed, and reveal its bottom line more clearly, without destroying the rationality of Chinese policymakers. This public statement maliciously creates a dark image of China's alleged intentions to dominate the world and threaten the South China Sea. 
It casts a false picture that China is a bully threatening regional as well as world peace. Pompeo is a politician who openly preaches lies and conspiracies. He is good at playing these political tricks. This, sadly, could push China-US relations into even more terrible situation. Given the complexity of China-US relations and information asymmetry between the two countries, the possibility of strategic misjudgments will increase. This could ignite powder kegs. History has proven more than once that this sort of tragedy arises from such strategic misjudgment. Whether there will be a war or not depends on the two countries themselves. If China and the US break up, neighboring countries in the South China Sea will be the first to be overwhelmed. Neutrality will no longer be these countries' firewall. But if they chose one side or the other, they will suffer severely. Pompeo's statement shows that the US policy in the South China Sea has changed from military pressure into a comprehensive suppression combining military action and hyping public opinion. This is an escalation of the US, tactical pressure on China, and especially on the South China Sea issue. By resuming such a high-stake public opinion war, the US has at least three goals. First, the US wants to constrain the pace of the code of conduct, negotiations and make it more in line with the US interests. Second, the US wants to disperse the pressure for US arms sales to the island of Taiwan and suppress the possibility of the Chinese mainland's reunification with military means with the island. Third, the US wants to set up a strategic pawn for the next administration to reshape the Asia-Pacific region and to deal with China. Pompeo's statement is a weather vane of the US, overall Asia-Pacific strategy and strategy toward China. To maximize the effect of counterattacks, China's measures should be incorporated accordingly into its overall Asia-Pacific strategy and its strategy toward the US. These must be based on China's expectations on the Asia-Pacific order and China-US relations in the next one or two decades. In this way, China's tactical choices will lead to neither arrogance nor fears of misfires. Once China has this strategic system established, the South China Sea issue will be transformed from the game field for China-US relations into a channel for the transmission of strategic information between the two countries.